As soon as this podcast is over, I got to get out of here and get some toilet paper. <laughs> Let's get out. Let's just do the podcast and go whatever ne- whatever anybody needs to do today. You don't have to mention it. Just go do it. <laughs> I'm so excited about <laughs> the end of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you have the rest of the podcast, too. The last bit of the podcast is the toilet paper shortage coming home to get Nikki. And I want you to know the whole time we've been putting the podcast together, I see Nikki's really quiet over there. It's on like, my phone. Intently staring at her phone. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't She's find She's looking for toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but the, by the time the day is over, she's going to have paid $100 a roll from an eBay supplier. But as long as I don't have to go out and At get it. At least I didn't have to go to the store. But no, even our store doesn't have it. So it's not like I can do that. Nikki, but I found some other alternative stores that people don't always necessarily think about toilet paper. Yeah. So I think I'm going to try that later. I know that this is hard for you to understand, but there are stores other than Costco. It's not. Stop it. The only... You mean the Amazon Fresh thing? Is that what you're talking about? Because they're out Man, too. If they ain't got it at Costco, it's gone. Costco's always been there for us. I don't understand when you tell me that Costco had no toilet paper oh, in the store. Man. Oh my gosh. I wish you guys could have seen. How does it not have could've... toilet paper? I wish you could have seen the look. She's like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm sending Eric. And I was like, to Costco? Because there isn't any. And it's just like, I might as well have told her that the world, like, the world's not real. I just don't <laughs> trust it. I don't no... trust what you're saying. She just looks at me like, I don't understand. Costco always has it. What do you... Unless they what do you... unless they discontinued it, which I, I deal with those things. But they always have Kirkland brand toilet paper. Do they have How any it... brands? No, no. Okay. Nikki, there's nothing. They don't even have napkins anymore. It's because people are panicking. People, people bought all the napkins, all the paper plates, all the paper cups, anything ah. that was made of paper. They're just like, we'll take it. We'll just buy it. Whatever. That's what I don't want to have to Whatever do. Whatever we need. Oh, well, enjoy the podcast with a lot of that talk. We oh, try not to talk too much coronavirus, but it's it is, point. It's it is dominating the news, especially since yesterday. Yeah. I mean, we like there's less in the podcast because I just, just <laughs> whatever. All so right. we have that. We did check in with Danger Scene. That was fun to catch up with them. If you want to watch the interview, you can go to Radio U Riot on our Facebook page. It's posted there. And also join us by subscribing to our Radio U Riot YouTube channel. That sounds lovely. I got to hurry does. up and get this done, guys. I got to get to the store. Go, go and find something, please. <sighs> Man, I gotta get gotta get moving. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. Bye. The riot has now been downloaded. Uh, I hope you installed some antivirus. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Nikki, I can get you every Resident Evil movie in a box set mm-hmm. for less than sixteen dollars. A physical set of them. You're welcome. <laughs> Stop looking at the deal of the day stuff. Nikki, it's, it's all we no have. It's no good. It's, it's all we have. I know, but it's nothing ever good. We're past the point where you're going to be surprised about a really good sale. You know what? She's right, guys. It's not going to be a, a popular movie, a current set. It's just going to be something that ties into some other movie or news that's coming okay. out. And all right. All right. Okay. That's all they're going to do. Okay. So what if I got you a different deal? What is it? Okay. What if I could get you 85% of Rockstar Energy... For four billion dollars. <laughs> are they selling or <laughs> what are they what do you, doing? What do you think? Well, I wasn't planning on investing that much money today, but I guess it's a possibility. Hang on, let me go through the change here in my purse. I get uh, yeah, okay, I got we it. Got enough. I think if we pulled it together. The founder of Rockstar Energy just sold his shares in Rockstar Energy to Pepsi for four billion billion dollars. dollars. <laughs> he started that company with fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. About twenty years ago. That's pretty good. That's so, pretty good money he made. You think like you think he did okay for himself? I think he did okay, even though he sold a Pepsi. So <laughs> Our favorite, uh, I, one I, of our I favorite. I was actually <laughs> going to say, they're not the only ones that sold out to Pepsi recently. One of our favorite Chinese food restaurants uh, just suddenly turned to Pepsi, and we went there yesterday, and it was so bad, I poured it out and then just got water, even though I, the drink came with it. 
I want you to know. I'm sorry, I can't drink this. Eric messaged me about it yesterday, and I was like, I. I was driving, so I couldn't really message back. But I was like, I already know. <laughs> I meant to, I forget meant to tell you. Like I had gone the day before to get carry out, and I was just like, man, look at how clean and new. Oh my, my god, it's a Pepsi machine. They sold out the Pepsi. What are you doing? No, it is a strong, bold Pepsi taste. Wow. Oh, it's terrible. So Russ Weiner, he's forty nine years old. He founded it. Here's his quote upon selling his shares in Rockstar. To Pepsi for four billion, billion dollars. Well, I'll have enough money to pretty much do whatever I want in life. Good. Great for him. That's four billion dollars. That should be plenty. The riot. They're kind of a big deal. Uh hey, can we do that again? Maybe a little more energy. Uh no. Radio you. So yesterday the Founder and majority shareholder of Rockstar Energy Drink sold 85% of his stock, almost all of it, uh, to the Pepsi company for $4 billion. billion. That sounds nice. $4 billion. Yep. Which means he went to sleep. He's probably a millionaire, but uh, he woke up a billionaire. So my question is, if you went to sleep whatever you were yesterday and woke up today as a billionaire, what would you do? Well, is it a travel ban or can we go anywhere or let's just say, let's just pretend we can travel anywhere without any issues. Okay. So, is that it? <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing, Nikki, you're, you and I already economy of scale. You're like, man, uh, I don't want to mess with all those people at the airport. No, like you're buying a plane. We're not going to the airport. Yeah, like, you're right. You're, you're traveling. You're right. You know, separately. <laughs> On your I'm, plane. I'm traveling now on my new Pepsi plane. Yeah. Because <laughs> of my partnership with him. Yeah. Like you, you've you bought a plane and a pilot. You've mm. paid his salary for the year. He's on demand. Now, you think that people who have like billions of dollars, you know, would just go to one of their many homes and probably do nothing. But I'm sure you're just as busy. So I still envision doing some sort of fun work. Uh, one that makes you a lot of money, but not a lot of work to have to do. Okay. But I would do it from the world as I travel around. Okay. I would just travel everywhere. <laughs> Emily says pay off student loans, part-time job in the park service, pay and basically pay off a lot of debt. Yeah. Fr- friends and family debt and, then and stuff like find that. Find a fun job that you don't mind doing that you don't have to do for money cuz you already have money. Yeah. Um, Manny says uh, I would first give some to the two people who have been there for me from the beginning. <laughs> oh, is that uh, I don't know. Uh, I think maybe his parents. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, give some money to a radio station, that's his us. church. And then I love his runs. Buy a zoo and live in the middle of it. Oh, that's fun. That is pretty fun. It's a great idea. What, what do you think, Nikki? What would you do? Um, I would just travel. Yeah. I would just go back to bed. Well, oh, yes. That's a fantastic idea. Maybe the first day is just at home. The first day is... Uh, As you shop for your new home. I, I'm in bed and I just lay there and it's just like, you know, every motivating force that I've had for years is almost completely gone. I mean, you know, there are all kinds of things you do because you believe in it and because you want to and whatever. But I mean, you get out of bed in the morning, even going to school, you were going to school to make sure that one day you could get a job so you don't starve. All of those kinds of things are now completely off the table. But I don't know how, at least for the guy who sold his company to make that much money, I'm, like you said, I'm sure he already has plenty of money. He it's hasn't different. felt he hasn't felt that in a while. It's different. I know, but I'm talking about me. The, a- I'm just the average te- person. <laughs> I'm just telling you, there's probably a good chance I wouldn't have left you high and dry. I probably would have come in and finished out the week. And then... Uh, I'd have to see you when I see you. <laughs> no, I mean, I'd, uh, Nikki, I'd just, uh, I think I'd probably buy a plane big enough and just put a studio in it. And then we could just, just go wherever around. the heck we want. You're like, why are you guys always in Japan? Like, that's our favorite place. What do you care? We're live. <laughs> You're still getting a show. Enjoy it's the same it. thing. So what? We're in a different location. <laughs> what do you care? Well, congratulations again to that guy. But I think most people would first pay off everything they could possibly Pay off. Man, I, I really think, honestly, if you just looked at me and said, hey, Obadiah, you're a billionaire, I would be like, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> and then when I wake up, we'll Make talk. sure I still have that money. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I'm just going back to bed. And then we'll bed. figure it all out. <laughs> Everything you love about the riot, plus a handy dandy fast forward option. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Okay. It's, uh, you know, there's a public health crisis. <laughs> 
As a result, people are going crazy. They're buying everything up. There's no toilet paper. There's no hand sanitizer. Now, there's plenty of food, but uh, whatever, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, after. (laughs) We get it. I I didn't make the connection until just now, uh, but whatever. Uh, So (laughs) when you find yourself searching for hand sanitizer, a couple of things to remember. One, there's soap everywhere. You're good. Like, you're good on soap, but nobody seems to want soap. Well, I think for hand sanitizer, um, it's about the portability with it, you know, wherever you're at. I get it. Just use some freaking soap. It's yeah, but everywhere. If but you might not be near the bathroom to wash your hands. You are. Just go. <laughs> Just go get some soap and whatever. This is about laziness. Hand sanitizer takes five seconds. Soap takes 20 to 40 seconds. And you're like, I can't spare it, bro. <laughs> I have to have the hand sanitizer. I can't. <laughs> Uh, so in this uh, search for hand sanitizer, some people are going to extremes like this woman in New Jersey. She owns a convenience store and she couldn't get hand sanitizer. She's like, no problem. To just, sell at her store or yeah. to for herself? No, to sell at her store. She's like, I'll just make my own. Oh, so she took some sort of uh, chemical sanitizer and began mixing it with other things and selling it at the store. Like you thought you were buying an official thing. Eh, you know, like cut semi-official. Semi-official. <laughs> it's uh, grandma's hand sanitizer. It'll still do the trick. It'll get rid of something. You know, I can't make any FDA claims about it, but it's all of the same stuff at less than half the price. Dude, I would love to see Pinterest's numbers on, like, people looking up pins on how to make your own hand sanitizer. You know what? I'm not worried. I I bought some silver pills from some guy I saw on TV. Like, I can't, hey. get, I can't get sick anymore. I feel bad because I don't know about, like, your mom and stuff but my mom would always just be like here like here's some hand sanitizer or here's this and I always was just like I don't need it uh, no thank you all this stuff and she's always hand sanitizing this whole time yeah I should have been keeping all that stuff you should have been keeping it Nikki. I was looking for it the other day I was like I know she gave me some bottles of this sanitized spray <laughs> Well, Manisha, there in New Jersey, uh, she owns this store. She's selling it, and people are now getting chemical burns. Oh, from it. So uh, she's under arrest. Good. You're not allowed to do that. Just do that. Yeah. (laughs) So I guess the moral of the story is is that when you go into a store and they're offering you any kind of a miracle cure or homemade something, just probably uh, at the front of the counter, you know, area. Yeah, it's not, not going to be on the shelf. It's going to be right up next to the register. And you're like, or if you were the person going in asking for sanitizer, and they're just like, oh, I got you. Come over here. What do you, hey, what, can you pull around, pull around the back? It's outside my trunk. It's right, <laughs> it's right back here. And we're only accepting cash for it. So just, uh, just something to think about. Yeah, be safe with it. A Rotten Tomatoes score so high, they refuse to make it public. The Riot on Radio U. So hey, yesterday, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone launched. And that was their free-to-play. Actually, maybe it was two days ago that it launched. Uh, that was their free-to-play Battle Royal mode. So whether you had bought the game or not bought the game, you could download this thing and play completely free. Uh, it was open to anyone and everyone that has a console and the online stuff. 150 players at a time on a map, mm-hmm. which is just, to me, that's just crazy. Uh, so they say in their first 24 hours, 6 million unique players. Players? So that's, does that count as a download then? or? Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, okay. what I mean is, is the 6 million people played it, so they had to have downloaded, downloaded it, it gotcha. you know, in order to play it. So that is huge uh they're saying i mean okay activision's not saying this per se but you can't help but feel like they're taking aim at apex legends that's another free to play which came after Fortnite, right and they had like an amazing traction because they had 10 million players in three days so they're saying six million in 24 hours yeah so i that like that's crazy like and but i mean it's one of those things where it's like hey it's free, so uh, I, even even I 
who never plays Call of Duty multiplayer. <laughs> Did you download it too? No, I, but I've thought about it. All right. <laughs> I have. I was like, you know what? It's free. Might as you well. You go in there, you get shot a couple times, you realize why you don't play Call of Duty multiplayer, and then you delete it. That's the joy of it. Great times, right? <laughs> we. I would like to see numbers of, okay, so how long... How many people continue to download it? You know, like, do they build a lot more? Or how long do they keep the download and then stop, like, playing? Yeah, sure. You know, like, what's the time frame for someone to get into the game and decide if they like it or don't like it? I don't know. I... I just remember when Apex Legends launched last year, I had so many friends that aren't... People liked that one. It it didn't do anything like Fortnite, but it was way better than it than people thought it was. Yeah, I, a lot of people I knew that aren't really into uh, basically online multiplayer shooters, they played it and loved it and played it a lot. And again, it was because it was free. Like, you know, those things get a certain momentum. People start talking about them. You see friends playing it in your friends list, you find out it's free to play, you end up getting in and checking it out. And look, I talked to a lot of people that loved it. So Call of Duty gameplay, but uh, it's the whole Battle royal thing. Uh, word is it's good. And rumor is if you win, there's a screen that pops up that says, get some. <laughs> Great. Now I spoiled it. I was supposed to be a surprise. Well, I just thought maybe, because I'm never going to win. <laughs> so you don't care. <laughs> I've never gotten my chicken dinner. I've never been the person at the end of what. Like, never I got get, to the end of it. And I'm not, and I'm not going to, I'm not making that a goal. I've seen the end. I'm good. It was bad enough the first time around, but now it's worse. Don't believe us? Just keep listening. You'll find out soon enough. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Mr. Rogers has the coronavirus. Tom. Oh my gosh. What? I was wondering who was going to be the first like well-known person to be with the coronavirus and it's his it's him and his wife. It's like the nicest one. I know. Like the nice one got it. He's the nice one. So he's been in Australia filming for an Elvis movie. Yes. And he had posted that he had felt uh, chills and sick and a fever. It didn't seem like based on his description like it was anything too bad. But because of it, then they got tested for the coronavirus, and now they're following the protocol with that because right. it was confirmed. His wife, Rita Wilson, they both have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said that they actually, you know what, I'll read to you from his Instagram post. He says, hello, folks. Rita and I are down here in Australia. We felt a bit tired, like we had colds and some body aches. Rita had some chills that came and went, slight fevers, too. To play things right, as is needed in the world right now, we were tested for the coronavirus and were found to be positive. What to do next? The medical officials have protocols that must be followed. We, Hanks, will be tested, observed, and isolated for as long as public health and safety require. Well, they were concerned because the the movie, I think, has been shut down at this point for yeah. filming, but they had been around a lot of people yeah. <laughs> before that, yeah. as is the problem when someone doesn't find out fast enough or it takes time to develop, and then you realize you've already been around a bunch of people and you've had it. Yeah. So he's... Uh, he's, he's there. Tom Hanks has the coronavirus. Aww. Man, come on. Never did see Mr. Rogers yet, the one You movie. still haven't watched no, it? No, I didn't watch it, it. Is it out Maybe now? Maybe the trailer was enough. Maybe the trailer was absolutely enough of the movie that I needed to see. It's been out for a while. So, like, you could get could it on demand it. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I haven't watched it because uh, I just, I can't get all the crying. <laughs> you don't want all the emotions? I just walk out on stage and, uh, or on in frame, and I'll just be like, well. You're such a good person. And I didn't even watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood when I was younger, but (laughs) just something about that trailer. Yeah. Like, well, it was all the words about people Mm -hmm. and loving and accepting and things like that. So, yeah. Well... There you go. That that to me feels like the most high profile case of this. Oh, that is, I think. You think so? Okay. The riot is well versed on many different topics. They're shy at first, but they're quite skilled at conversation. This is the riot on Radio U. So let me ask you this. Yeah. All right. Like I don't want to be one of the Corona people that are like, Rah! you know, got to keep living our life on some level, right? But I actually was thinking I was supposed to go to the gym today. Hmm. I was like, you know. Did you not get the email? Oh, no, I got it. <laughs> okay, I did. I did. Our, our Every gym. place, I think, is sending out the updated email on what they're doing to protect things so that you don't stop going there. Yeah, they they want you to keep coming. But I'll have to admit, I well, I thought about it 
in it's been 48 hours since I've been to the gym. I went Tuesday after the show, mm-hmm. and yesterday I did stuff at home, and then today I was going to go after the show again. And I was just like, you know, Tuesday I was standing there naked in the shower thinking like, wow, here I am with all these strangers. We're all being naked together. Not at the same time, of course, but in the same space and in the same whatever. I'm sweating like crazy. I'm picking stuff up. And I just started thinking, maybe, maybe no. Maybe that's not the place to go right now. Maybe no. Well, I think it's a, it depends on you and your gym and your places that you go. It's got to be your decision. Well, what? Okay, but. Listen, this is you and me talking. Yeah. What do you think? Like, you. St- um, I think it's smart. Like, I mean, I, I've got Abraham Lincoln's uh, elliptical in my basement. You could just be working out at home. That I, I, that I could use that. I've used this as an excuse to stop, like, going to, especially the grocery <laughs> yes. store and, yes, and even Costco to a point to where it could just come and be delivered. Yeah. I think that's sometimes smart because, you know, that's probably the, the place that we go to that has the largest amount of people. Um, you you mean the grocery like store? If, yeah, for, yeah okay. for shopping right. and stuff. But for the gym, people still go even when they're sick. Oh, yeah, they do. And I think that's something that you really do have to worry about. Even when they tell you don't go, you know, like you're not feeling good. A lot of gym people still push through when maybe they should stay home. So I don't mm. know. It's it's up to you. That brings us something to think about. But you're not going. No, I didn't. But well, you were going anyway. Didn't want to go anyways. <laughs> I got a new bike at home. I was like, I'll just use that. <laughs> Good enough, whatever. Okay. All right. But again, that, you have to decide what's what's the right answer for each person. That's the thing I'm kind of thinking about today is like, well, do you go? Well, maybe you just go in and you just work out, but you don't get a shower. You don't use that sort of side of it. I thought about that too. But like, no, the damage is done. Like, you go in there, like, people are sweating. You're like, here, let me rub up against your sweat. And you're like, no, because you wipe the stuff down. Yeah, that's doing it. (laughs) Well, I mean, if you're just going in to run on the treadmill or use a piece of equipment, but you're right, if you're doing the whole circuit thing, it just depends. I don't know. Just pick a corner and just work out there. Seems to me like, and I know they don't want to hear this, but maybe we should... Like, when we go to the gym, let's all sweat a whole bunch, and then let's all go in the corner for a massive group hug. Oh, no. That's basically what we're doing. No, no. <laughs> like, no, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is. But are you wanting them to, like, check temperatures at the door? No. Because some places are doing that. In yeah, some it's all parts the restaurant the world, that's doing that. There's restaurants that will do that to not let you in. Yeah. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I was looking for a really good excuse. I may have just found one. To not go to the gym anymore? No, I just, I couldn't. I, you could then cancel your membership and use that, remember? Use that as the excuse. Come on, man. They're like, no, please. I was going to break up with you anyways, but now I'm just using this. Listen, I can't get together. I can't go out Friday. Corona. We're listening to the worst of the riot. Radio U. I don't know about you guys, but I love food. Like, food is good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever had any. It's not supposed to make you happy, but it makes everybody happy. I don't understand why we are like, you can't have an emotional reaction to food. No, go ahead. Have an emotional reaction to food. Just don't depend on it for your emotional reaction. No, I think it's okay to have an emotional reaction, you know, like your favorite foods. But I don't think they want us to have an emotional reaction to something else that's going on and then turn to food. And then turn to food for positive emotions. For that that hug that you needed that no one else was giving you. (laughs) You see the problem. Like it's beginning to emerge even as we talk now. Uh Uh-huh. Right? It'll comfort you. Well, uh, I love food in the morning. I never plan for food, which is really stupid. I should. I need it every day. And yet I'm like, I, I wake up like, I don't know what to eat. What should I get? Starbucks apparently now serving breakfast burritos. Yeah, did you see those? No, I didn't. It goes with the three new drinks they have. The three new drinks are not receiving the... Rave reviews? Rave reviews for like, you know, it's not really an everyday drink or an everybody style drink. Uh, People are kind of surprised at the flavors. Yeah. But they are saying they at least like the burritos. (laughs) So there's something there. Hey, I'll tell you right now, breakfast burritos are... Good, and there's supposed man. to be two of them, I think they have, like a veggie one and some other one. They're not calling them burritos. They're calling them wraps. I'm sorry. It's a wrap. Uh, Burrito's not good enough. So they've got a bacon, sausage, and egg wrap. That sounds great. It's got bacon and sausage and eggs in it. Um, and 
Thanks for telling us. You're welcome. I didn't get that from the name. Cheddar cheese and sous vide potatoes. Okay? Yeah. And a flour tortilla. The veggie one is a bright red salsa tortilla with eggs, black beans, sous vide potatoes, pico de gallo, jalapeno cream cheese, cotahia cheese. All right. I don't know what that is or if I even pronounced it correctly. And there you have their veggie burrito. Uh, I think the first one sounds maybe a yeah. bit more our style. Slay the fat pig and put its flesh <laughs> in the burrito for In me. the burrito and wrap it up nicely in the wrap, will you? Pieces of its of its belly and then I don't even want to know where the sausage comes from. So <laughs> I'll take that. Oh, they look delicious. Yeah, so those are out too with the new drinks. Uh, I mean, and they're a steal at $5.45. What? Now... I'm just going to say this, okay? I've been trying to do this more, too. You take a Sunday, you make a few breakfast items that'll last you the week. Yeah. And you can make a burrito or a wrap Yeah. for a lot less than that. Oh, my gosh. It, Nikki's not lying. You could, oh, what a week. Is this pen? Follow us for recipes. But, like, you can cook up a bunch of eggs and whatever. <laughs> Just eggs that's, and bacon. That's all you need. A little bit of cheese and you're done. That's actually why I eat breakfast burritos a lot on the weekend. Because you can, look, you can be really lazy and still make an unbelievably good breakfast burrito. It doesn't require much. Not too much effort. Oh, boy, that sounds good. So then it, you could make your whole week for, like, $5. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't, but as I mentioned before, I don't like to plan ahead. Oh, you should though. I know. It makes I a should. big difference. I re- it could change my whole life and look over here. It could use a change. Are you sure? It could use <laughs> a change. I just take a few minutes every afternoon and then I put the next day stuff in my bag. Yeah, I know. That's what I used to do that. Yeah. I used to be like you. I used to pack breakfast and lunch. Did you? <laughs> Not anymore. I had years where I did that. Well, then once you stop, though, it's very hard to get back on the train. Now I'm just like, you know what? I don't need to pack because, like, there's McDonald's. <laughs> and we've got Rice Krispie treats in the break room. We I'm got fine. all this stuff. We're fine. I'm fine. <laughs> in case you're wondering, yes, we do get complaints. They have gone too far. This time, they are going to be held accountable. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. So, Nikki, I I think you may appreciate this. I let somebody borrow my phone the other day. Yeah. This was, and um, I said, here, you can use this. They needed an app that was only available on the iPhone. And so I was like, that's fine. I put the app on. I was like, here, use this, and you can whatever. And they, so I'm in a room full of people. And they have a microphone and they're like, hey, your phone got locked. What's your password? <laughs> With the microphone on? And I was like, uh. <laughs> Hang on, I'll come to you. <laughs> so I tell it to them and I was like, eight. And they're like, eight. <laughs> six. Six. <laughs> five. Five. Why do they zero. say it out loud? I don't know. But it was just the whole room just burst out laughing because it was it was just like and then i just I was like hey if anybody wants to steal my phone after this that's all you need you're gonna have to be changing your passcode that's the unlock no man if i change it do you understand what's gonna happen i'll never remember it well you hardly need it i mean you have your face thing yeah i know but every once in a while doesn't your iphone it's it like asks especially like if you restart your phone and stuff and they're like oh no we're gonna need well they just want to double check your face isn't good <laughs> enough we're gonna need the code they just want to make sure we're gonna need the code well, you're gonna have to change it eventually so just start learning a new number through other ways and then you'll Man, be ready to switch over to that one. I'm telling you right now, I had to. I lost my lock for my locker at one yeah. point, and I had to get a new locker. And I had one day where I sat there in the locker room, just like, I know, <laughs> I know this, but all I could remember was my old. Don't you lock. know what to do? What, you take a picture phone? of it. Yeah, in take a picture of like the code thing. Yeah, that's great and all, but I couldn't get to that. It's my on phone, your phone. My phone was in the locker. Why is your phone in the locker? Your phone never leaves you. Or forsakes you. Yeah, it's, it's always, always there, there for, for you. you and it's always there for you. you. Then that way you just look up the picture. Every time I get a lock, because I usually forget it too, I yeah. just take a picture of the, the back of it before you take the sticker off. Do you really think that I should change my code on my phone? Probably. You think, you think I can't trust those people? You can, but I mean... You need to every so often. Yeah, it's like when you go into the gym and they're like, don't leave your phone or your valuables in your locker. And I'm like, okay, then why do I have a locker? <laughs> if I can't, 
If you guys are telling me not to leave anything in it, the whole point of me having the locker is so I can leave things in it. Well, they want you to lock it up, and they just don't want to be held liable in case something happens. Oh, my gosh. It's like a whole other thing. It's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. But if anybody wants to steal my phone, just call. Uh, I have the passcode. I'll be happy to give it to you. Come on by. I mean, let's make a game of it. I'm going to give you the code, and then you'll have to get your hands on the phone. And you'll have to promise not to do anything bad. (laughs) Yeah. And by the way, I leave things laying all over the place. So I'm sure at some point I'll leave the phone laying around. You can just grab it. it. (laughs) No problem. No big deal. Worst Worst of of the the riot. riot. Radio U. So people are freaking out a little. I mean, it, it depends on who you talk to with this whole coronavirus thing. And you find yourself in a position where you're like, okay, what do I need to do? And how do I take care of me and mine or, you your know, space. Whether, you know, your apartment, your dorm room, if your parents need help? Like, I don't know. Like, we're all different ages at different places in life, right? Like, what do you do? I'm going to make a recommendation. I think you should pray about it. Now, this is going to sound stupid. But I'm dead. I'm completely serious about it. God, do I need to stockpile toilet paper? God, do I need to can buy? Can I leave some for others? Can I leave some for it? others? But okay, real talk though. Think about that for just a minute. You know, I have always said here on the show, always advocated this to take as much of your life as possible and lay it before God and talk to Him about it. And that includes a time when everybody else is okay. I don't want to overstate this when some people are panicking, uh, when some people are not. And you find yourself in a position where you're like, okay, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, how should I be reacting to this? Take five minutes today, sit down, shut your phone off, shut whatever off and just say, you know what, God, I would really like your help to deal with what is going on around me right now. And what should I do? And ask God, Wait there for a couple of minutes. If you don't feel like God, you know, necessarily talks to you in that space, you know what? That's okay. Just get up, go about your business. And I know God actually promises that if we go to him and we ask for wisdom, you know, for the right way to do things, that he's going to show us what that is. And I know that if you ask him, he's going to show you what to do. Most of us, though, are not asking. (laughs) Like, real talk. I think most of us don't ask. We just do what we think is best, and then afterwards we're like, shoot up a prayer and hope for the best. Well, we follow along with what we see a lot of other people doing, and and that might not be what you need to be doing. And I'm I'm not here to beat up on anybody. I'm just telling you, like, hey, you can ask God to help you. Ask first and then act. Take a minute. Five minutes is what I actually said. And just ask. And if you don't have a friendship with God yet, look, you don't have to like start one and then wait a month to ask for help. You can just say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit. I believe you. And I want you to come into my life and show me how to live. Do I need toilet paper? What, whatever. Like, see, I'm, I'm, it's a joke and yet it's serious. Talk to God today about what's going on. I gave during the last fundraiser, and all I got was this crappy morning show. This is The Riot on listener-supported Radio U. Spending some time with friends at a distance. We are, for Radio U Ohio, getting ready for the Steadfast Music Festival on Saturday. And yesterday, we checked in with Jeremy from Crusoe. And we we said today, we'd be checking in with Danger Scene, who are also performing there. Danger Scene! Yay! Yay! How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're doing great. We're excited to come play there. It's going to be great. So, guys, um, <laughs> I don't want to be the big naysayer in the room, but just for branding sake, are you sure you want to put Switchfoot's album on display like that when oh, you guys are them? danger scene? <laughs> you should put your own. I think I think we actually ha- we have the American Dream like uh, vinyl right here, which is... So that's we at least have ourselves on the wall, so that's cool. Well, if you guys want to see <laughs> the wall and see the guys in danger scene, if you hop on to Facebook right now, if you go to Radio U or Radio U Riot, but next time your guys needs to go on top above that's you. That's right. Mm-hmm. We just need a full length. We just need to be able to put it there, but we don't have the full length yet. So <laughs> you need like we'll, a flag we'll of it or like a big banner. Mm, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, and having that in our house feels like a shrine. No, no, it's not wrong. <laughs> it's product okay, placement. It's fine. It's product, yeah, but and like in all honesty, don't like when I when you go to like techno shows, EM like electronic music. Don't they have flags? Oh well, yeah, like flags. a banner. Or something? Well, so you guys put your flags oh, yeah. up. <laughs> 
All right, we we should get a flag. Yeah. Honestly, I go to a lot of soccer, so and they have tons of flags, so we could just get a danger scene flag out there too. You could do that too, <laughs> absolutely. And you guys need scarves, the right kind of scarf for yes. sure. Yeah, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. Or if you get enough scarves, you could just put those behind you. So really, yep. we're we're yeah. just workshopping this, but we've got some ideas. Okay, <laughs> branding, danger scene, flags. Yes, got it. yeah. Perfect. Okay. So how are the Slowly guys working in... on everything? <laughs> how are you guys doing? What's what's new with danger scene? Uh, we are good. We just got done shooting, um, earlier this week, three days, uh, a three day shoot with a music video. Nice. Um, uh, we've been recording a full length album and, um, (laughs) trying. (laughs) Yeah. So it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's super exciting when, um, we're still awake, which is good because it's been a long, (laughs) it's been a long three days, especially with the video. So for you guys though, when, When you're doing music, because aren't you always just like working on it compared to where some bands They're, maybe go in and they spend like, all right, this is the two weeks we're doing it all. But you guys seem to be always creatively working on it. Yeah, it's it's a constant thing. We don't do like we can't really set aside um, a month or something and go in and just write and write and write and write. Um, we have to just do it over time and do as much as we can. Yeah, we can. we're always looking for like three days in a row that we can figure out to put together. Be like, all right, we can shoot music video these days and then. Two weeks from now, we can go record this thing or we can do something else. So it's just literally looking for any open time. So tell us about the music video. Is it, it, is it for a song we know yet or is it going to be for a, a new song? It'll be for a new song. New song. Um, music video is really fun. Uh, it's kind of one of the first like like kind of more serious like storyline music videos. Um, it's not just us two being on, on <laughs> in front of a camera and that's all you get. So there's actually other people in it, which is great. Uh but, uh, no, yeah. Uh, so the best thing about this music video was, uh, kind of one of the scenes is I get to smash someone's face in a cake and, but they also got to do it back to me. Um, so that was really interesting. <laughs> I've never had cake icing in my ear before, but now I can say I have. <laughs> well, so this, hey, is, this is a big video. Then you have uh, you have people in it, and you have a budget if you're yeah, buying yeah. cakes. So yeah. this is big. The part yeah. that I'm really concerned about is is the cake okay? Did you guys eat the cake? Uh, no. We uh, okay. uh, <laughs> there was parts around the edges that were okay, so they were like using Not a fork and just like just yeah. We yeah. tried not to let. What good parts of the cake were left go to waste. I tell you what, though, we blew our whole budget on on cakes. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> just that. We probably didn't need more than a couple of cakes, but when you you have a budget, and you're like, I, well, we can afford this. I was many just cakes. glad we only needed to do one take for the, for the cake. They were like, I was like, please tell me you got that. And he's like, we got that. Okay, cool. okay, good. Because the best part was because Obi loves cake was, so uh, much, he wouldn't want you, da- uh, you know, yeah, hurting those so much if you get in, get to I enjoy know. the rest. Yeah, do you guys have you yeah. heard of my organization, the National Coalition for Cakes? <laughs> I don't think so. I didn't Cakes realize that was videos. you. Yeah, it was yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, I've been behind that the whole time, and like I just feel like there's a lot of cake abuse that takes place, and I'm trying to be out there to make sure that cakes are being properly respected and eaten. Um, and I'm sorry to hear about your video. Probably going to put a disclaimer on it, to be honest. <laughs> if you can even air it. Yeah, if we can even air it at Advisory all. content. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like smashing cake into face is probably the fastest way to get cake to your face, though. True. Yeah, but did you guys swallow and eat the cake? No, you were like... <laughs> I did... I no, oh, I did ask permission. I was like, Matthew, am I, when my is in the cake, am I allowed to just uh, uh, chomp? And he said that's okay. So... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Are you all right with these answers? Well, I'll just take it up with the rest of the council, and uh, you know, our people will probably be in touch. We'll see where we go. Yeah. Yeah. Meetings. It takes some time. In a few weeks, you should have a response. Council. Yeah, I mean, I'm the head of the council. That's but like, so cool. Where it's the the cake council. Hello. The head council of the coalition wow. for cake. I, it's just. You know, it's incredible. I'm incredible. Well, I'm a part of a lot of things, things you don't know. They about. also have it's, a big got, budget, so. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. He's got ducks in there all in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, well, this is no Danger incredible. Scene that we're talking with. Don't forget, you can say hi to him and see them if you want to. Hop on to our Radio U or Radio U Riot Facebook page. You can watch them there. And then Steadfast Festival is coming up on Saturday for Radio U Ohio, where they'll be performing with Danger Scene. Now, not to be too annoying, you guys yeah. are working on this full length. Do you have a target date, or is it just whenever we get enough days, there goes the full length? <laughs> it's whenever we get enough days, there goes the full length. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, we, we've tried to set deadlines and stuff from before, and like uh, 
our last couple songs that released, um, it took us a lot longer to get them out than we thought. And so. it kind of it kind of bums you out when you're like, all right, it's going to be out in a month, and oh, then it's and- like, all right. It's been it's been nine months, and then you feel bad about it. <laughs> it that just... is a little off. That is that is that's yeah. disappointing. <laughs> that feels like a lot of yeah, my bro. work around the station. Well, like you just set a deadline. You're like, I'm going to get this to you next week, and a month later, you don't do it. And you're like, I feel bad. Better not. But then it's nice just to be surprised when it is done. Yeah, and it's a surprise for everybody. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> so, so we've we've kind of gone. We've cut. Ca- yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I couldn't. <laughs> He insists you. <laughs> we've we've kind of sat down and we've picked out all the songs and like we've done a lot of pre work on them. So like at least that part is done. So hopefully it's not going to be nine months and hopefully it's going to be sooner than that. So. You know what? No pressure though. Whatever it is, it'll be. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody gets cake when it's done. We'll celebrate. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> yeah. If we can get certain assurances that the cake will be handled properly, yes, right. they can have a cake. Right. So. They have sign to, some waivers. Yeah, they have to sign some stuff. Yeah. Just. <laughs> want to be clear about that we'll invite the band cake <laughs> yeah. yeah what's the what's the song they always want it what it doesn't matter all right so guys thank you so much for hanging with us this morning and uh you know thank what any you. any other danger scene stuff we should know about that we were too self-centered to ask <laughs> well the cake time took up no yeah. we just no we just want people to show up for steadfast festival and to keep listening to you guys like it's really all it is okay you know what i it's be fun I like where they're coming from. Those Nikki. are good answers. Those are good answers. So, well, hey, we're Danger Scene fans, guys. Thank you so much Yay, for hang tight. being with us today. You might be thinking that this won't be quite as bad the second time around. Well, you'd be greatly mistaken. We're listening to the worst of the Riot podcast. I want to say hi to Jonathan, yeah. Nikki. Jonathan texted about the interview and he says, tell me more about this council for the National Coalition of Cakes. If you were listening when we talked to Danger Scene, you would hear that Obi is a... Uh, At least I'm the president. The, the president, the and ruler, founder. <laughs> the founder of it. How does one get a position? Unrelated, I've always found Obadiah to be a strong, thoughtful, and compassionate leader with good welfare of cakes in his heart. Yes, always. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I There's a lot of pressure to put people first, but I always put cake first. I know that cake is what's actually important. Mm-hmm. Dude, speaking of, do you want to hear something that's going to... You know what? You might you're sitting down. It might be <laughs> it might be too heart heart wrenching for me to even tell you. Uh, what is it? I'd love to hear it. Uh, you know we have a favorite grocery store when we it do. comes to cakes. We do. We uh, celebrated our riot anniversary a few we weeks did. ago, and we had one of those cakes. It's got a buttercream icing to it's it. So good. And if you ever find yourself in a need of what I'm going to call a buttercream fix. And what that means, I'll leave to you. Uh, but you could go in there and buy a cookie. Yeah. And they have these, like, animal cookies. And so it's like a chocolate chip cookie, and it's just got a ton of icing on it. Then a second chocolate chip cookie, and then it has, like, Cookie Monster on it or something like that. It's like a cookie wheel sort of thing. I went in there last week just purely for informational purposes. Sure, not not to get anything. They don't make those anymore. I thought so, because when I picked up the cake for our anniversary show, that whole display thing has been changed. It's just cakes now. I don't think they make any, like, they, they don't. cookie sort of stuff. No. That's not already, like, in boxes out in the front. That's right. They have... They weren't selling enough. ...eliminated the best thing they had aside from the cake. You know why? Why? Because they were forced to put the calorie content on it. You think so? Oh, yeah. It was no. like a 1,000 calories for the cookies. Big deal. For the, the thing that you could easily eat one of. I mean, how many calories in a salad? 1,500? Well, what salad are you getting? A salad with the cookie on it? I'm just saying, you know, like, don't worry about calorie counts. Just live your life. I think that turned a lot of people off of it. Mm. Well, <laughs> not me. I mean, granted, I didn't eat them very often. I mean, a couple times a year. Uh-huh. But that's enough for them to keep doing it. Well, did you look in the front? <laughs> Do they still sell the buttercream cake, like, slices instead of the whole cake? Oh, is that a thing? Yeah, you can buy, like, a slice or a half a cake. Oh, gosh, I, should, I shouldn't know that. Well, like, what you just gave me is dangerous information. It's to where you want to have a cake, but it's not for, like, a party, so you're not picking one up. And it's you just, just a, a piece of cake. Yeah, just, uh, there's a cake. <laughs> just a piece. What? It's a spur-of-the-moment piece of cake. Oh, man. That's probably not good. There was one time, one time, and uh, I could have been at a pretty low point. I don't know. But I was, like, 
uh, I was kind of home alone for the weekend and I was picking some stuff up at the store and I was like, man, I could just get a cake. I could just, I like, nobody has to know about it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell anybody. There doesn't be any accountability. I could just buy a cake and then I could eat as much cake as I wanted. Just over the weekend. And then, you know, if it happened to find itself into the trash and nobody knows, but uh, I want you to know at the last minute, I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, we can't. Well, you could have said yes to the little piece of cake. We can't have this. No, <laughs> no. Well, Jonathan, thank you for texting. And Obi, thank you for being a compassionate leader, like he said. Somebody has to be there for the coalition of cakes, Nikki. You can text us anytime, 877 radio You And if you missed us talking with Danger Scene, I got that posted. If you go to Radio You Riot, our Facebook page, you'll see it there. It's also at Radio You Riot on our YouTube channel. The Riot. Just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not good. Wait, isn't that exactly what it means? It's The Riot on Radio You. <laughs> I'm having a good time, guys. I'm having a great time. I'm not having fun. Okay, so you understand that, you know, there's a toilet paper shortage of some kind, and it has been a little ridiculous. I mean, people are freaking out, whatever. Well, Nikki has only just now. No, I actually need toilet paper in my house. No, no, you don't. Okay. Like, it's not a stockpiling thing. It's, I think now the people that actually just normally need it are having a, tr- a problem because of everybody else who went and took all the rolls. That's exactly right. And now I can't find it anywhere. Yep. It's not at Costco. Yep. It's not on Costco's website, which uh-huh. comes from our uh-huh. local one. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's not on Amazon Fresh, which is normally how I get my things delivered. Mm-hmm. It's not on Amazon because every time it's either currently unavailable or it causes problems and you can't actually. Because I found one that says it's for sale, but then when you try to put it in the cart, it you get nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. I'm not I mean I haven't tried like local grocery stores because I normally don't go in there, but I think those are gone too. I don't normally go in those kinds I don't of places. Know. I don't normally go into the store and all my convenient delivery ways are all gone. I love she goes, Guys! Stop doing this! Come on! I I can get one that will be available in stock April nineteenth. That's a month away. I don't have enough toilet paper for a month away. I just want you to know that you are right now experiencing what a lot of my friends are experiencing. And that is the, hey, um, we just have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, normal. We're, we're not trying to go to the bathroom, you know, in April. We're trying to go to the bathroom in March. And so, like, hello? So everybody keeps telling me, oh, go to Dollar General. But I think by now, even no. those must be gone. Well, and I I'm, I'm, Yeah. I will tell you that the Dollar General down the street from my house. Did you try? Yesterday, no. Yesterday morning, they posted a picture of a fully stocked toilet paper aisle. The same lady posted last night, and it was like empty. Mm-hmm. And someone had taken the shelves off the wall. <laughs> because they're just not even asking. <laughs> Ooh, Andrew said, well, on his side... There's a local grocery store and then another place that might have it. I might send Eric to that place. Yeah, that's the other thing I love. I'll send Eric. I'm not going to buy just toilet paper. I can't go into the store and do that. I get embarrassed. Why? Because I'm going to have Eric buy as many as possible at this point. I didn't know this was going to be a thing. So what now you think, it's a thing. Okay, so Nikki, up now until now, is. all this toilet paper shortage has just been one big joke. No, and now, yeah, now, she, it's affected now she's me. like, okay, wait, wait, you're telling me that this is real? I don't need to because of the coronavirus. I need to because of everybody else who freaked out over that. I didn't buy hand sanitizer. I didn't buy any masks. I haven't stocked up or anything. But now I need actual toilet paper. Right, Nikki, I want you to know that what what you're experiencing right now is why there's a toilet paper shortage almost in the first place. A couple of people stocked up, took a photo of themselves stocking up, mm-hmm. which led people to get afraid there wouldn't be any toilet paper. So they started out like, 
I'm going to go buy toilet paper. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, what if there isn't any later? So they bought way more than they normally would. And no would. one stopped them in, in the beginning. What, like the manager's going to come out and be like, sir, you can't have two no, packs of Costco toilet paper. No, but Costco had a limit on certain things. And if you're telling me is, okay. I was going to go to Costco that's today where, that's where the to panic go actually buy started. the toilet paper. And you said you went yesterday and there was none. There wasn't. And here's, here's how I know. Yesterday I went to Costco. I had three things to buy, one of which was some bottled water. Not because I'm freaking out, but because I always keep bottled water in my car and I was out. And so I grabbed some bottled water, which is where the toilet paper is. Bottled water and toilet paper in the same spot. And it was empty. And here's what I love. Everybody I watched for a while, everybody that came in that store was looking for it. It was one long like train of people just going back to that section of the store to discover there was no toilet paper. They were all there for the tea. Well, I'm a little nervous now. I'm a little nervous. And you know what? Sometimes <laughs> when you get nervous. Well, now we're panicking, and that's what led to people buying to, all of it. You have to go. No, I'm just going to only be able to go here. Do we have enough here? Can I take some home? <laughs> Can I take a roll or two home? I haven't. Am I going to have to have Michael search you every day when you leave? <laughs> like, all right. Well, no. Are we going sure to we are we gonna have to put out an all staff email that says, Don't please do not paper. take toilet paper from the radio station? Guys, I just normally get everything delivered or dropped off to my house. <laughs> and I can't do that with oh this because every place is currently unavailable. This is not for the cameras, guys. I actually see legitimate concern on Nikki's face. No, it's annoying. It's very annoying. No, it's not just annoying. It's that you might have to do, like, the fact that Nikki can't have it delivered is almost more than she can handle right now. They deliver the toilet paper and my dinner. I'm calling Uber Eats for toilet paper. That was why we all started having this stuff delivered because of it being convenient. And now I can't. We're going to war. It's for toilet paper. It's getting real. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Yes? (laughs) Why are you looking at me? Stop it. Thank you. (laughs) I did just spend that whole song and that whole thing still looking for toilet paper to be delivered to me so I don't have to go out. Yes, is that what you want to hear? Is that what you want to hear? It's like, it's over there like, well, this is an international brand. I can find some international stuff. This is toilet paper from another place, um, but I, we can get that. That'd be Eric! <laughs> Just go find something. Eric, I need you to go to the store. <laughs> Please. Eric, take the gun and the knives. It's just something that we're going to have to figure out today or tomorrow, okay? That's all we're going to have to do. Who wants to bet me $20 that when the show is over, Nikki's on the phone to her mom? Mom? I know. Do you have any toilet paper? My mom <laughs> is way more better planned at things than I am. Do you have any toilet paper? And I been to Costco so many times since this all started and I didn't buy any because I didn't need it. Right. Now I do and there's nothing there. Man, it's like living in Soviet Russia. It's like there's no toilet paper, comrade. <laughs> here's, here's your role. You have to use it for the month. So Amanda just texted, got mine at uh, Walmart and Kroger was sold out where she was and so she got it at Dollar General but everybody keeps saying these Dollar General sort of places yeah. but I bet you by the time you know, now where we're currently at, they're going to be sold out too. Nikki, it's not just a dollar. He's a general. general. When does he stop being a general? And it's the <laughs> job of generals to, by God, get things done. Well, we're just still having a problem. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We're going to just have a fantastic day. Hey, could you guys set aside your own personal problems and everybody make sure Nikki gets what she needs? <laughs> I don't want this to be a huge thing. No one has to worry about it. It's not a total emergency yet, but we're getting close to where I just want to have this solved. <laughs> Nick says that the Wuhan brand of TP is super cheap right now. I'm not interested in that. It's thank you, no. You, so you're looking for? <laughs> no, thank you, Nick. Various grocery stores that we could visit. No, I did find this strange one that was like, it's toilet paper for the queens, like for the the ladies of this world. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Don't think I'm going to get that either. I'll just wait. We're fine. We're fine.
Are you sure? We're fine. But if you find any today, you just let me know. <laughs> just... I told Nikki as soon as the show's over, I'm headed out immediately. Are to you start really? To- no, I'm no, not. come on. Why don't you go? I need, uh, hey, Eric, Obi's going too. Could you coordinate with him so that you go to different locations? And just now, get whatever you, everybody needs? If you find it, make sure you get what we need. And then if there's some left over, you can get some for him. So, like, if it's a buy two, just tell him you couldn't find any at all because those two are for us. Because those are the only two. <laughs> okay. And if it's buy four, you know what? Get us four. Oh, it's and fine. Then... It's totally fine. The only way he's getting any is if there's not a limit. Well, I'm going to see in the closet here, though, our storage closet. And you know what? Because Everybody... sometimes we also buy a lot of toilet paper. Sure. There was a while where we kept saying, stop, we don't need any more because we have plenty. Maybe yeah. it's all here. And now you feel dumb. You're like, I wish I wouldn't have said anything. Because we really needed it. I wish they would have just kept buying. (laughs) This was the worst of the riot. And we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. (laughs) The riot exists because Radio U exists. And Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now. At RadioU.com slash donate. In the land without toilet paper, he with toilet paper is king.